Hey guys, and welcome back to another Dot Race video, and today we're going to be playing Superbike 22. It's time for round three of our BMW career mode. It's time for Estoril. So here we go then, guys. Starting in pole position in a qualifying, I barely pinched. So here we go then. Eight laps of the Estoril circuit. It's a decent start. Bautista to the right hand side. Jonathan Ray's coming through, and Top Rack as well. So we went from first down to fourth temporarily. Squeezing through. Jonathan Ray's up on the inside for one. Oh, beautiful. Brilliant start. That's exactly what I would have wanted. Getting ahead of Bautista was the primary objective here. Getting to the front would have been a dream start, but unfortunately, that wasn't quite the case here. Going into turn three, we've got what we've got. It is what it is. Now, for the first time, I've decided to gamble with the SC0. The SC0 tyre is the harder option of the weekend, and honestly, I felt better with this tyre in the practice and the qualifying than I did with any other tyre. Of course, the SCQ gave us the best lap time we did, as we're going to try and outbreak Jonathan Ray into the difficult section of the Parabolica as John Jonathan Ray is pushing us. He squeezed back up the inside. He didn't really want us to let, uh, get through there. So now we've got to do all that work again, but we are pretty much where we wanted to be. It's a good start as we now go into turn seven for the very first time of asking. And now to the right hand. This is a difficult part now because my line is so different to the AI as I make a small mistake going into Gancho. And then in for turn 10, the, oh, the rear tyre, the wheel is just spinning up all the time. Early stages for the SE Zeros, not really ideal, but I'm pretty certain the more we work, the better this SE Zero will feel. The harder option compound for the weekend is certainly going to do us some favours towards the latter stage of the Grand Prix. Now is an opportunity for us to drop down to power setting two. Stay in the slipstream of Jonathan and hopefully outbreak him. Is it the toughest breaking part of Estoril or maybe one of the two? Into turn one, we are closing in. Now for this weekend as well, I must mention, I have changed my brake discs. I've gone for the higher mass version of the 12 inch brake disc. Didn't really find the need to change them with the Kawasaki, but here with the BMW M1000 RR, I do find that I need to try different brake discs per different weekends. They are making a big difference and I'm beginning to get my old groove and feeling back with Superbike 22, so I'm excited for the future of this career mode, especially with the M1000 RR. So now into the left hand side, as things have relatively calmed down a bit. Oh, never mind about that. Whoa, Bautista flew up on the inside. Had to really move the motorcycle out of the way there. I thought he was going to take my nose off. Good job. I sort of hesitated from uh, trying to fight back. Sometimes you just got to let the AI pass, otherwise, bad things can happen. And speaking of bad things, I'm caught. I got caught in the rumble strip. There's not much I can do there. I'm going to have to slowly come over across there and hope... No! Oh, really didn't want the on that penalty there. Didn't think that was appropriate, but now we've got it. Forget about letting Bautista pass. We're just going to have to go for it. That's frustrating. That is really, really annoying. Where the hell am I going to do the long lap penalty? I've never tackled the long lap penalty here in Estoril. At least not to my knowledge. I have no idea how to go into that corner. I've never practiced it. This is going to be challenging. But we have no other option now, so going to have to just bite the bullet and give it a... Oh, ho, ho, Bautista! What an aggressive move there going into turn one. Look at Garrett Gerloff on board the Yamaha. The satellite Yamaha are now up to second place. Terrific job from the Texan. Going to try and squeeze back into the Lamy for turn three. Bit of aggressive move there, but I'm at the point now that I can't do anything but. I have to go into this long lap penalty now with zero experience and just, just wing it. <laughs> That's what we're going to do here. I'm going to try and do what Jonathan Ray did in Manny Cause get into the long lap penalty as quickly as possible and fight back up immediately upon the exit. So here we go then, into the long lap penalty. Stay to the left, stay to the left. Oh, oh, that's tight. Oh, I almost went across into the other part there. Look at the front bobbling and everything. We've done it, but my goodness, that was scary. I thought, I tell you what, if you enjoyed that, give us a subscribe. That was a pretty impressive long lap penalty if I do say so myself. I thought we'd abuse the limits there and I thought I'd have to go in and do it again. Look at Xavi Vieja having a pop at Axel Bassani. He didn't quite get through. So we have rejoined. And we are down in 12th place. Lost a whole 10 positions there. And a whole heap of time. Three seconds, roughly what you lose on a long lap penalty. It was about roughly the same there. 
That was a pretty well executed long lap penalty though. So I'm not too disappointed with that one. I've got power setting three at my disposal here. I'm getting all over the shape and all over the track here. So I'm going to use a bit of slipstream down to power setting two. Can we out drag the Ducati? We can't get past Pisani. But we can get past Michael Ruben Rinaldi and Xavi Vieje. In fact, Rinaldi might have a lunge. He did not. Thankfully, we still have a chance. So, looking at it, Bautista and Gerloff, they're in second place. You can see them just ahead. They're approaching turn three now. There's a quite a big snake of riders here. So, there is a good chance that we could possibly get a top five. Maybe a podium if we're not too crazy. It is optimistic, I appreciate that, but we can see what we can produce. So into the right hand side for turn five. Oh, eager upon the acceleration, but this is a good spot for me to hit the brakes and slowly turn it into the parabolica in section here. So now to the left hand side for turn six, still holding in that line. We're seven tenths quicker than we were from the aid of using power setting three. I guess there's no inhibitions now, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing to lose now. This race is already done and dusted if we just give up. And of course, we don't give up. That's not our style. So into the left-hand side. Apologies for the heart rate monitor. It seems to be a bit, a bit strange right now. It seems to be bouncing all over the place. I don't think it's that crazy, but uh, yeah, apologies for that. It's not particularly accurate right now. But I tell you what is accurate is our opportunity to squeeze past Bassani. Oh, that's not a good overtake. That was not good at all. I actually made a fumble there. I was trying to change the power setting back to three or to maybe consider dropping it down. And I completely mistimed that one. That was not a clean overtake. But I guess, Bassani, that's for knocking me off the podium in Assen. <laughs> Rivalry reignited. So now into turn one. We've closed in quite well there. But look at the rear tyre just not hooking up nicely for the first corner. That's me being a bit too aggressive with that right trigger. Got to do better for the next couple of races, especially here in Estoril, and that's too eager on the brakes, we're losing time. This is costing us. Just trying to balance the physics and feedback of this game compared to MotoGP. It's not working out too well. We're having a tough race here today. Regarding the long lap penalty, I don't think that's really the big issue here. I just need to improve my riding style a bit. Get back onto the BMW, it didn't do too bad in the practice and the qualifying, we were rapid, but unfortunately, just looking a little bit, uh, a little bit twitchy, a little bit nervous upon, on board the motorcycle today. So, got to improve upon that. But we are approaching, what, two more rounds that I really enjoy, or at least Mazzano I absolutely adore. But then when we move to the fantastic Donington Park, I tend to struggle here in Superbike 22. But I have been doing a lot of work trying to improve my lap times with the M1000 in Donington Park. So I do hope... I can pull what Scott Redding did this year, or last year, should I say now, for Superbike 22 BMW career mode. So, coming out of the 13th corner, we're going to bring on the power. Hopefully just snag a little bit of slipstream to Alex Lowe's. It would help us out massively as we approach the first corner. Still optimistic about that podium, aren't we? But uh, I don't think it's going to happen. But look at us late on the brakes. Can we get past Alex? Trying to. That's aggressive. I always find that I just can't seem to get riders upon the brakes here in Superbike 22. The AI just seems to have something else when it comes to the braking. For me, when I first started this game, I thought they were braking like MotoGP bikes and we were on Superbikes. That's the only way I can describe it. You can't seem to brake as well as they can. And I'm pretty good at this game. I, I get by. But for some reason, I just cannot outbreak the AI in some corners. Turn 1 is one of them. So now back over to the right-hand side for Turn 5. And bring on the power and hopefully get the braking right here for the left hand side for turn six. Still in the midst of this battle. There's no reason why we can't get a top five finish here. I think it's occupied by Scott Redding at the moment. Michael van der Mark in six. You see the BMWs together just further ahead of us up the road. So now here to the right hand side. Go nice and tight to the apex there and start breaking in. We get that change of direction super close to Ikela Corner and that bloody thing. <laughs> I don't know what it is but this corner, but I find the bike locks on an angle. I didn't find that too much with the Kawasaki, but the, M the M1000, it feels like it's locking and it's going to just crash. So I then release and quickly flick to the opposite direction and then I get a weird sort of correction with the bike. Could possibly be my uh, setup. My setup is uh, very 
negative on the suspension in the sense of uh, turning everything down. So here we go then. Never mind about the suspension. We're on the brakes all going up the inside of Lekoona. Got lows here a couple of corners ago. And we've just done the business on Lekoona. Goodness me, it didn't half hit my re rear tyre there. So for all the marbles, who's going to finish the top BMW? Now don't forget guys, this is this today's video is only going to include race one, so if you're enjoying this one and you want to see more, then stay tuned for tomorrow, where I'll have the Super Bowl session and the second race. Make sure you're subscribed and you don't miss them for tomorrow's upload at 2pm. Right then, here it comes. We have not a full lap of fuel, but close enough. We're on the penultimate lap now and here in Estoril. We have a good chance, there's a possibility that we could uh, get past these two and get onto the fifth position. I want to be top BMW rider. That's my goal here. Factory BMW, believe in us to get the top spot. So that's what I'm going to aim to do here. So into Gancho. Didn't quite lock that time. Felt a lot better this time around. So that's pretty good. Oh, lekawona has gone down. I think he took Alex Lowe's with him or Alex Lowe's took him out. I'm not quite sure. Just both of those names have disappeared from the top nine on the left hand side or at least the uh, top eight skipping out fourth place there for some strange reason so here we go we have one more lap remaining the heart rate's increasing because I'm desperate to become the top BMW rider so here we go they're coming out the slipstream hard on the anchors that was probably my best opportunity look how hard we were braking there you see in the rear tyre just skip across the tarmac we're pushing hard here ladies and gentlemen Downshifting to second, we'll bring on the power just a little bit and start breaking into the difficult right-hander for turn three. Not as tight as the apex as I would have wanted there, but the SC0 is coming into its own here. Heart rate is increasing. It's probably going to go to 140 in a moment. I'm pushing, giving it everything we've got. And incredibly, we've only lost really 1.6 seconds to Jonathan Ray. After all of this battling and whatnot, we're only down by four and a half seconds to the man who's leading this Grand Prix. But I tell you what, he's being caught up here. Is he? No, in fact, he isn't, is it? Because we've got about Bar Bautista, Garrett Gerloff in third, and then Top Rack is chasing them both down. But I don't think we're going to get the better of these bit. Nope, it's not going to happen now. The pressure has gotten to me. Oh, and there's Xavi Vieja. He's through. But I'm going to fight back going into the difficult right-hander for turn eight. Do we have the position? Oh, he's going to try and squeeze me out. He didn't want it, but I'm fighting him back for turn ten. This is for seventh place, ladies and gentlemen. You'd think this was for a podium spot as we give it everything going into the final couple of corners. Well, I blew that one. Really felt like I could get in there and fight with my two teammates, but unfortunately that didn't come to fruition today. I do hope I haven't left you disappointed today, guys. I've done my best, but today just wasn't good enough. Probably have to give the SCX a try in race two. So there you go then guys, Jonathan Ray wins his first victory of the season, Alvaro Bautistas in second and Garrett Gerloff in the podium positions in third place. So guys, thank you very much for watching the video, I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below and if you really enjoyed, don't forget to hit the like button and consider subscribing as well. Thanks for watching guys and ciao for now. Oh hi, didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Race video.